Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about how to practice mindfulness. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to place this disclaimer. This presentation is for academic and training purpose only. This is not a substitute for professional clinical opinion. For clinical opinion, please do contact a psychiatrist or mental health professionals. Conflict of interest? None. In this video, I am going to discuss it. what is mindfulness, the concept of mindfulness, what are the foundations and also attitude required for mindfulness practices and what does research say about this and how to practice it. This video is targeted to doctors, psychiatrists, healthcare professionals, general public, people working in a highly stressful environment and job, caregivers of any chronic illness and also people suffering from chronic illness and persons with mental illness and their family members. Let's discuss mindfulness. The brain, our brain has 86 billion neurons. That means 8000 to 9000 crore neurons and each neuron will have approximately 500 to 1000 synapses and each neuron is in constant firing mode. That means they are either sending signals or receiving signals from various parts of the body. Hence, the brain is, the brain is bombarded with both external and internal stimuli and brain will be constantly perceiving sensations, feelings, thoughts and behavior from 360 degree space. Brain is in a constant chaos. Then, how do we cool our brain? How do we focus on particular action or thought or feelings? The answer is mindfulness. That means our brain is in a constant work even when you are sleeping. Now, how do we focus and effectively work? For that, the answer is mindfulness. The core actors of mindfulness. That means who are the stakeholders in mindfulness? Let's discuss them. The first and the foremost our brain, in that brain, we are going to perceive thoughts, we are going to perceive feelings, we are going to perceive behaviors and also sensations. Sensations may be body sensations or else inside our body may be feeling hungry or abdominal pain, so even headache. So any sensation can be considered. Further, each of these are interrelated. That means if you look at thoughts and feelings, they are interrelated. If you have a good thoughts, you will have a good feeling. If you have a negative thoughts, invariably your feelings will be depressed. Similarly, the feelings and behavior is interrelated. If you are feeling good, your behavior also will be very positive and you will be in a positive mode. But if you are feeling sad, if your behavior will be negative. Similarly, depending upon your behavior, the sensation also. That means all these four variables are interrelated. Not only that, they are interconnected also. That means depending upon your thoughts, if you are, your behavior also. If you are positive, your behavior will be seen. Similarly, depending upon your feeling, the sensations also perceived. That means all these four actors, thoughts, feelings, behavior, and sensation, they are interrelated and, are, and interconnected and one variable will influence the other variable and hence these all four variables play a major role in mindfulness therapy or practice. So as I mentioned, thoughts, emotion, sensation, behavior and also biological symptoms such as sleep, hunger, sex and various other functioning also will be considered under the mindfulness. But how does it play a role? The issue here is having thoughts, having emotions or sensations or behavior or biological symptoms are not the issue. The issue is how do we interpret the above actors and getting stuck in the process and it becomes a vicious cycle. That is the problem. If you have a negative thoughts and you have, then it will generate negative emotions that is sadness invariably sensation and behavior also will be negative in the form of either 
suicidal ideas or else rejection or else withdrawn behavior getting the getting into this vicious cycle plays a crucial role hence we need to break this vicious cycle let's discuss these thoughts emotions sensation and behavior if we are caught in this vicious cycle the symptoms we are going to see sensations also called as somatic symptoms the person may have a headache back ache body ache chest pain fatigue joint pain and gastritis if there are feelings related that is emotional symptoms anxiety panic attack low mood irritable numbness anger and frustration looking into the behavior the behavior will be hostility isolation avoidance behavior withdrawal crying substance use and inter internet addiction so these are the behaviors we are going to see what about cognitive or thought symptoms being confused unable to func un unable to have attention and sustained uh, attention that is concentration disorientation poor memory poor judgment and these will lead to various other problem only that they will also have poor thinking ability or else lack of judgment coming to the biological symptoms insomnia decreased appetite decreased sexual drive altered bowel and bladder habits and motivation level will be very less so all these symptoms are related to if you have problem in these four actors so if you need to correct that then you will be able to answer all these problems if you have all these problems or you have one or few of these symptoms and you are going to benefit by mindfulness practices so my dear friend as i mentioned mind mindfulness therapy is not only helpful for psychiatric illness they are also useful in various day to day maladies let's now move into mindfulness so if you define mindfulness mindfulness is the practice of intentionally bringing one's attention to moment to moment awareness of our thoughts feelings bodily sensation and surrounding environment through a gentle nurturing kindness and non judgmental attitude so if you look at this diagnosis or the definition i would clearly say that mindfulness is a intentionally bringing one's attention you are bringing your attention to the present moment into the into the present moment by moment making awareness of your thoughts feelings bodily sensation and surrounding environment through a gentle nurturing kindness and non judgmental attitude so this is the definition of mindfulness how to do that it is a skill one develops through meditation or other training methods such as maybe mindfulness breathing mindfulness eating mindfulness walking so various other exercises are there i will discuss that shortly that means mindfulness can be learned by practice so that you have to understand but however the researchers have found that that each day every person that means most of us 40 to 50% of our time is spent on unwanted thoughts emotions behavior and sensations that means if you are awake most of your time that is 50% of your time is spent in unwanted things that means your effectiveness is very less so that means your working ability is also very less so keeping this in background we need to learn mindfulness to improve your efficiency even at workplace now let's understand the concept of mindfulness what does it mean i have defined now but how to understand that let's understand here is a person who is in the present that means this person body is present at this point of time but however his thoughts are in the past he is thinking about what happened one week back two days back why did his wife fought with him why did his father shouted at him why he did not get promotion he is stuck in the past or else the same person is thinking about tomorrow that means he is thinking what will happen tomorrow whether he will get the job or not whether he will get promotion or not whether he will get married or not that means although the body is there present but his thoughts emotions 
and sensations are in the past or in the future. If you are thinking most of the time about the past, invariably it will be negative. You will be focusing more on the negative aspect of your life. That is by default. Hence, the sadness will prefer, prevail. Suppose you are focusing more on future. What is going to happen? You are constantly worried. That means you will be having anxiety. So my dear friend, look at the way our human beings, we are on an autopilot mode. In the autopilot mode, either we will be thinking about past or ruminating about past. It should have not happened. I should have responded like this. How can he say this? And your mood either will be depressed or else you will be angry and frustrated. In some of them, they will be constantly worried about tomorrow. So that will lead to anxiety. But the issue here in mindfulness is learning to live in the present moment. That means the body is there in the present moment. His thoughts are brought to the present moment. His feelings, his sensation and behavior will be in the present moment. That means he is not on autopilot mode. If you are in autopilot mode, means your efficiency has come down dramatically. You are not in the present moment. One more example I will give you. Imagine if you are playing with your child and you are thinking about the past or worried about the future. You are not enjoying the play you are playing with your child. The child will sense that dad is not interested in playing with me. So you are, lo you are losing a very important moment of your life. So that's where the mindfulness comes. Whatever you do in the present moment that should be felt or experienced and enjoyed, if required, cherished. So that is what is all about mindfulness. Look at the figure here. Here a person is walking and constantly thinking there is a beautiful scenery but he is unable to feel that. He is unable to experience it, unable to keep it in his memory because he is constantly thinking about his day-to-day -day activities, his family problems, office problems, financial problems, in spite of being in a beautiful place. Look at the dog. The dog is enjoying the scenery. That means even if you go to a wonderful place, maybe Uttarakhand or else maybe to a foreign destination. If you have this constant either ruminating about the past or about the future, you will never enjoy in the present moment. You will miss every moment. You will miss the moment being with your family, being with your parents, being with your friends or else you are not living your life at all. So the mindfulness is required to improve your quality of life. That is what is mindfulness. Further, mindfulness is not empty because many people will think mindfulness means empty. Because in the figure, you can see a person who is completely full of thinking and the dog has only focusing on the present moment. The mindfulness is not empty. That means it is a focused, intentional attention to the present moment, living in the present moment, experiencing the life, life every moment and becoming impartial spectator to thoughts, feelings, sensation and behavior. So this is what is required in mindfulness. So now moving further, let's understand what is this impartial spectator. Here is a person, he has thoughts, he has emotions, he has senses and behaviors. Now he is having a thought of what will happen tomorrow. He may not get salary. What will happen to his family members, to his parents, he is constantly worried now. His emotions are becoming anxious. He is having panic attacks. He is having sensation of choking. He is feeling that he is going to die. And he, needs, he feels that he needs to go to a hospital. And his behavior is becoming restless. So, in that situation, a person has to do a impartial spectator. That means, he has to move out of his body and start observing his thoughts. Why these thoughts are coming unnecessarily about tomorrow? Why he is feeling very anxious? Why there is a sensation of choking and also his behavior of becoming restless? It is called as impartial spectator.
that means you are watching your own thoughts your feelings you are not getting carried away by these thoughts or these emotions or these sensations that means you will start living in the present moment that is what is called as impartial spectator in this impartial spectator you are not just detaching yourself from these thoughts you will acknowledge those thoughts yes these are my thoughts these are my feelings these are my sensation these are behaviors you acknowledge yes they you will accept them without any judgment that means you should have a non judgmental acceptance of these uh, all four entities and being kind to them not to become critical about that and not going with them that means you will let them go it is very essential to understand about mindfulness and being impartial spectator and letting go all these unwanted thoughts emotions sensation and behavior of becoming restless why should we do this mindfulness this is one of the commonest question everybody asks why sir the simple reason is most of us our brain is in autopilot mode and very few times we will be focusing on our attention and working majority of the time our brain is in a constant chaos and constant autopilot mode so why should we do what you practice grows stronger as you know practice makes perfect but you should know what to practice if you are practicing autopilot if you are practicing constant irritability you are shouting at your family members you are shouting at your fellow colleagues workers or else you are constantly sad you are hating yourself and other people or else you are having constant negative thoughts or else your behavior is constantly irritating others if you practice that that will become stronger on the other hand if you practice happiness if you practice joy gratitude love positiveness that will grow so you have to understand this what you practice will grow stronger that is what is very important is neuronal plasticity the the neurons which fire together will grow together and they will become more stronger so what we what should we have to do we have to decrease this irritability anger sadness hate negative thoughts negative feelings we need to stop them and focus more on happiness joy gratitude love positiveness then only that part of the brain will grow stronger and you will enjoy life in any condition it is not the situation outside because the happiness is not around us it is within inside that is what is mindfulness is going to bring from your inside then how does mindfulness work the success of mindfulness is more you practice one becomes perfect and you need to practice positive thoughts positive feelings gratitude love but you have to remember you need to practice living in the present moment and nurture the right mindfulness that is very essential not allowing your brain in a autopilot mode so let's discuss various foundations of mindfulness there are nine different mindfulness foundations first and the foremost as i mentioned living in autopilot mode that means thoughts are constantly bombarding in your brain and you are in completely autopilot now you have to make intention you have to have the motivation you need to get rid of this autopilot mode and come to the focus of living in the present moment that means get reading getting rid of autopilot mode not dwelling in the past or in future that means you are not going to constantly think about the past or the future you will be living in the present that is the second important foundation the third one is need to avoid painful emotion this is by default everybody wants to avoid crying everybody wants to avoid painful emotions so now what we have to do is not to avoid them accept them approaching these emotions that is painful emotion in the intention of acknowledging it is a part of spectrum of emotion that means you will not have only happiness you will not have only sadness 
It is a part of spectrum. You should acknowledge it and say it is part of living. The part of living is also one day you are going to die, I am going to die. Accepting it, accepting the sadness, accepting the despair and also having happiness in between. That means you are acknowledging the presence of the spectrum of emotion and you will feel and you will enjoy even the sadness. That is what is called as not to avoid these painful stimuli. Acknowledge and accept the spectrum of emotions. Getting carried away. This is commonest which is known in most of us, especially the people who are being weak, depressed or anxious. That means whenever the thought comes or emotions comes, you get carried away. You get carried away by speakers, maybe the leaders and sometimes you do something mistakes. So, here you have to become impartial spectator of your own thoughts, emotions and also sensations and behavior by not reacting to them. You are just absorbing them and you let go them and you are not going to hold on to these emotions, thoughts, sensations. You will acknowledge them and say, this is part of me and now they are not here going to be constant. They will come and they will go. The issue here is again coming to the fifth point. Issue here is not about the thoughts, emotions, sensations and behavior. Here is the interpreting these things. Interpreting these four stakeholders either real and true. No, they are mental events. They are your mental processes. Acknowledge them as a part of your body, your part of mental process, your part of brain. You are saying that yes, I do feel sad. I do feel happy. It is a part of living. And the sixth one is need to be in control. Allowing things to be just as they are already. You would want to control everything in the world. That is simply impossible. Allowing the things to be the way they are will help you to accept them. Because you can't change the world. You need to change yourself. Because you are in an autopilot mode. You are in the process of interpreting wrongly the thoughts, your emotions or else even the sensations. And the seventh one, being worried that is focused on future. Here the problem is about the destination. It is the outcome. Every person is worried about the outcome and we are not focusing on the process. Being in present or journey. Imagine if you are traveling from here, that is from Bangalore to Delhi, of course, you will reach Delhi, but the way you travelled, the what you saw, the people you met, the process, the process is very important, not the outcome. The outcome of our life is death. You will also die, I will also die. The process is the journey, the way you lead life, the way I lead life, how much I enjoyed, how much I helped other people. That means the process is important rather than the outcome. Dreadful sensation, acknowledging and accepting their presence of having a richer experiences of various sensation. That is not running away from the dreadful sensation. Yes, you also get abdominal pain. I also will get. Everyone gets headache. Don't get threatened. Oh, headache means brain tumor. No need to think like that. Yes, I have a brain. It also may get headache. Now. Look for the solutions rather than be having a catastrophic reaction and becoming get caught in the whole vicious cycle. Coming to the ninth important foundation, getting locked in a rumination or excessive worry or avoidance. So, but here again, I am focusing what you nurture grows stronger. That means we should not think about the past. We should not think about the future. We should focus on the present moment and enjoy the present moment, whatever your thoughts, whatever your feelings and sensation. And you have to accept them, acknowledge them, be kind to them. So emotions, thoughts, sensation themselves are not the problem. The problem is the way we react to it. Thoughts are not facts. They are the mental events. They are the mental process. So just acknowledge them, accept them. Today you feel sad. After a few days, you will feel happy. That is the way life is. None of them is constant. Change is constant. 
So coming to the mindfulness eight attitude quality everyone should have. If you develop this eight quality, mindfulness becomes very easy. The first one is to learn mindfulness, you should add this attitudinal quality. First and the foremost is intention to focus. That is very essential. That means I want to focus in the present moment. That you should have. That the intention. Second one is beginner's mind. Beginner's mind means you are not going to have the prejudice. And you are looking from all perspective. A young person who enters into a field will be thinking from all 360 degree. You will not have any prejudice. You will not think that this is not happened, this will not happen. So he will be open for everything. That is what is required. Patience. Because many a time, things will unfold on its own when the right time comes. Fourth one, accepting or acknowledging these four stakeholders. Thoughts, emotions and sensation and behavior. Being non-judgmental and, and becoming impartial spectator to all these four spectators, four important variables is very essential. Non-striving for outcome. You will not focus on the outcome. You will focus on process. It is very essential. Letting go. That means you will allow those thoughts, painful thoughts, painful memories or else painful emotions, you will just allow them to go. Self-compassion. That is being kind towards self. If you are not kind to yourself, who will be kind to you? Just ask this question to yourself. So, before you become kind to others, you have to be kind to self. That is called a self-compassion. And the other important thing is gratitude. Grateful to the people who are helping you or who are there in your life or else the people who have come to teach lesson. You have to be gratitude, have gratitude towards to them also. Because if there is an enemy, there will be a competition. Because of the enemy, he will grow. Hence, you have to be gratitude towards your enemy also. Moving to the mindful responding. What does it mean mindfulness of responding? Let, let me give you one example. Mindfulness training is like dealing with a ADHD kid. ADHD means attention deficit hyperactivity disorder kid. Here the kid is very hyperactive, is unable to sit in one place, jumps from one place to another place, is in constant move, is highly impulsive, troublesome, difficult to deal and he will have only few friends. The mother will be constantly running behind him and his father will be losing temper. Just like your mind. The mind will be in constantly jumping from one thought to another, from one emotion to another emotion. So, it's just like ADHD kid. The kid, if it is running so fast from one place to another place, though it may not lose its energy, but it will exhaust the person's energy, that is the family member. Father, mother's physical energy will be exhausted, they will become frustrated, they will become anger, they will have depressed and they, they need to and they, they can't focus on their work. It is similar here also. If your mind is constantly moving from one place to another place, you will not be able to focus. You will be exhausted. You will not be able to think properly. You will not be able to work effectively. So, how to deal that? And at the same time, you are worried. What will the kid do in the next moment? Will he sustain injury? Will he harm anybody else? At the, or you may be thinking, what did he do yesterday? Did he hit another person? Did he create trouble in the school? How will the society will react to him? How will the other judge him? At the same time, you may have guilt or shame of giving birth to your ADHD child. So the whole complex of ADHD is your brain. Your brain is doing that. Your brain is running. It is not focusing. It is creating a lot of problem. You will become self-critical. People may not like you because you are unable to fulfill your work. They may criticize you and you will start brooding about those things. So ADHD kid is your mind. So now, instead of beating the child, punishing the child, learn to respond to the child by being kind. Because even if it is ADHD child, by beating the child, you are not going to achieve anything. You need to engage, you need to accept, you need to acknowledge the child and respond to the child needs. That means ADHD is a special child. 
and special child requires special attention. Similarly, if your brain is not focusing, it is not in the present moment, it is a special brain. You need to give special attention through mindfulness. That is very essential. That, is, that means you have to acknowledge the ADHD child, accept the child, start working with the child. Similarly, here you need to acknowledge. That means acknowledge that your brain is not focusing. You need to acknowledge your thoughts, emotions, sensations and behavior. At the same time, you need to seek help from the professionals for your ADHD child here also. For mindfulness, either you can do by yourself or else look for the practitioner who is going to help you in mindfulness. And you need to work with your ADHD child. That means you need to work with your brain through mindfulness. Now let's understand. I am talking about mindfulness. What does research say about this? There are many studies pouring about mindfulness. Mindfulness in various conditions, both in medical condition and also mental health disorders. That means it is helpful in both the situation. Not only that, it is also helpful in various stressful situation and various professionals, even in healthcare professionals. Here is the study which clearly talked about mindfulness based stress reduction as a stress management intervention for healthy individuals. A person who is healthy but is stressed. There, the initial study results have found that the mindfulness is going to help the quality of life and also improves stress resistance and also resilience. That's what this study says and it is a meta-analysis. Moving to the second important, effectiveness of mindfulness in healthcare professionals. Again, in this study, which is a meta-analysis, it clearly said that quality of life of the health professionals, resilience improves. Moving to the mindfulness training in workplace, workplaces, European Journal of Training and Development in 2019 also said that in their meta-analysis, it said that all workplaces should implement mindfulness that will improve the efficiency and also it will improve the quality of life of their employees. Further, Mindfulness stress reduction for women diagnosed with breast cancer. Again, the preliminary analysis and also the study from the Cochrane Review clearly said that it improves initially the quality of life and also psychological well-being. That's very essential. That means these are the early studies which I have been talking about. Further, mindful med meditation for chronic pain. Again, in the meta-analysis, they also say that there is a good indication to believe that mindfulness has an important role in dealing with pain. So, to understand my dear friends, mindfulness is found to be effective in short-term follow-up studies in various conditions like depression, anxiety disorder such as social anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, agoraphobia, various other simple phobias, personality disorders and various chronic medical conditions including stress management. That means mindfulness will improve the quality of life. So now let's understand the mindfulness concepts. What are the different concepts? How do we deal this? How do we understand this? See, mindfulness can be understood by four important concepts. First one I said, paying attention, intentionally focusing. That is one. That means our brain is in a constant autopilot distraction. So we need to pay attention. Getting connected. All human beings are social animals. We feel lonely. Hence getting connected is very essential. Connected with self and others. The third one is purpose of life. Whether it is self or for, other, for others. Fourth one. Being aware of thoughts and feeling. That is most of the time we will be evaluating negatively about self and also thinking that we are not good to this world. So, these are the four concepts needs to be worked. And let's understand from the perspective of mindfulness. If you move further, let's discuss paying attention, that is focusing. As I mentioned earlier, the body is in the present, but is constantly ruminating about the past. Hence, it is sad or else he is worried about the future, he is anxious. Learning to live in the present moment that is paying attention and focusing. 
how to do it? I will invite you all the viewers who are watching this video. I request you to sit on a chair or else lie down. Relax. Relax and sleep comfortably. And now close your eyes for 30 seconds. Once you have finished 30 seconds, that means you are able to focus to some extent. Now let's move one step forward. Now let's close your eyes again. I invite all the viewers, close your eyes. Sit for 30 seconds. Relax. Do not think about this pink elephant. As I mentioned, close your eyes. Relax. Do not think about pink elephant. After 30 seconds, the more and more you try to avoid, it comes repeatedly. That means deliberate attempt to suppress certain thoughts, images, impulse or emotions make them more likely to surface. That is called as ironic process theory. That means Daniel Wegner has clearly said that more you attempt to suppress it, more you up attempt to ward off it, it comes repeatedly. That is the important exercise which we have to understand. Now, how to pay attention? How to, if you are trying to suppress the yesterday's thoughts or else you are trying to suppress tomorrow's worries, you will not be able to successful. So how to do that? Focus on breathing. This is where the mindfulness comes. Because any amount of trying to suppress will not succeed. The only way is focusing on breathing. How to do that? So I will invite again all of you how to learn to pay attention. That is by focusing on breathing. So I will invite you again to understand simple breathing technique. In simple breathing technique, you will learn paying attention and focus. Focus on breathing technique involves sitting in one place in a comfortable chair, relaxing yourself, placing your legs comfortably on the floor, keeping your hands on the chair or else on the abdomen and then close your eyes. Relax and keep your hand on the abdomen or else on the chest. Take deep breath and Hold for some time, one or two seconds and exhale. And here, when you are doing this, you need to focus on your abdomen or all the chest. The way your hand moves up and down when you breathe. So now, you are gently bringing your attention and also thoughts and you are experiencing of your emo emotions to the present moment. Present moment of breathing. Breathing the good oxygen and exhaling the carbon dioxide, breathing in the love and also exhaling the hate, hatredness, breathing in the joy and exhaling the despair. So you need to focus on breathing, breathing on the chest muscles or else breathing and focusing on your hand movement plays a very essential role that will bring your attention to the present moment. It is very simple but difficult to practice but it is not impossible that is very essential to understand now moving to the next important technique normal breathing technique in normal breathing technique you will inhale for four seconds and exhale for four seconds i will teach you now so you will inhale o1 o2 O three, O four, and exhale. O four, O three, O two, O one. So you will repeat this cycle twenty to thirty times, so that you will do at least three minutes of this attention enhancing technique. Now again, I invite all of you to do this 
normal breathing technique. Comfortably sit or sleep. Relax. Place your legs on the floor or else sleep comfortably. Keep your hands on your abdomen or else on the thighs or else on the chest. Whatever you feel comfortable, close your eyes. Now start inhaling. O1, O2, O3, O4. O4, O3, O2, O3. So this is how a normal breathing technique is done. Now we will move to parasympathetic breathing technique. In this technique, you will inhale for 4 seconds and exhale for a period of long 8 seconds. Now I invite all of you to do this parasympathetic breathing because this technique has been found to be very useful in reducing your stress and reducing your heart rate. Now let's do this. I request all of you to sit comfortably in one place or else sleep. Relax. Relax your hand. Relax your legs. Keep your hands on your abdomen. Close your eyes. Focus your attention on your hands and also breathing, inhaling air. Now, I will start counting. Inhaling. O1, O2, O3, O4. Now you have to start exhaling. O8, O7, O6, O5, O4, O3, O2, O1. And this cycle of inhaling for 4 seconds, exhaling over a period of 8 seconds, improves your parasympathetic tone. That brings down your stress. Do this 20 to 30 times as a repetition cycle or a period of 3 minutes to 5 minutes. This brings down your stress level remarkably. Now moving to another important technique, sympathetic breathing technique. In this sympathetic breathing technique, you will do a rapid exhale over a period of 18 times. This is by doing closing your mouth and with rapid succession, you will be forcing your air through the nostril that is exhaling through the nostril. I will demonstrate it now. Now I invite all of you to do this type of breathing. Sit comfortably on your chair. Relax. Hand on your thighs. Close your eyes. Start exhaling in a rapid succession. By doing this 18 cycles repeatedly for a period of 3 minutes to 5 minutes, you are going to improve your sympathetic activity of your brain. So, when you are focusing, what we should do? It is not focusing in the emptiness. You will acknowledge, acknowledge your thoughts. You will acknowledge your feelings. Accept them. Be non-judgmental. Be kind to your experiences of your thoughts, images or else emotions and sensation that is very essential in the whole process and whenever you try to focus since your brain is in autopilot mode it will just snap it off don't worry gently you bring back to the breathing technique start focusing on your hand abdomen or your chest as you start focusing all of a sudden again your thoughts will go off and wander off don't worry Again, gently bring back to the focus because the, all these years, you never did this. The more you try to do it, the more it becomes uncontrollable in the initial part of mindfulness. Yes. But over a period of time, you'll be able to succeed. That is what is all about of mindfulness. Moving to the second important concept, connectedness. Because we being a social animal, we want to be connected with our family members, society, relatives, friends and also with self. Let's understand this. We need to connect ourselves and to the society. If I ask you one question, what do you cherish in 2015? What do you remember? What did you enjoy in 2015? 
most of the time you will remember enjoying being with your friends or with your family members or with your relatives or something which was very joyful but you don't remember the other mundane things because most of the time your brain is in autopilot mode so you don't remember at all those things what has happened in 2015 now you need to connect yourself first and the foremost you have to get connected by yourself how to do that whenever in the morning you get up get up and say to yourself you have to say your name i have to say hi suresh pardmat good morning have a nice day do this for next two to three months now you are acknowledging yourself you are being connected to yourself you are being kind to yourself because most of the time majority of our population do not love themselves they are highly self critical they are highly critical about their looks about their thoughts about their underperformance or else the society is looking down upon them if you are not kind to yourself who will be kind to you hence you need to get connected with yourself that is very essential so once you start doing this that means you are acknowledging yourself accepting yourself and you are becoming non judgmental about yourself and learn to live in the present moment that is the reason you need to connect with yourself over a period of 2 months now you add one more important sentence you will say once you get up in the morning hi suresh padmat good morning have a nice day i love you so once you start saying this you may feel silly what is this nonsense are you a narcissistic that is the question you will get in your mind please follow the instruction do it over a period of 5 to 6 months you can feel the love of your daughter your son your wife your family member you will feel the love of your parents you will feel loved you feel that i have been loved by everyone because you are training your brain to be happy to be loved and also to love other person as i mentioned earlier what you practice will grow stronger here you are practicing the love the practicing being in love practicing in loving others and feeling the love this is the very essential important ingredient to be connected with yourself now you need to connect with others how to do that every day when you go to sleep especially in the night you need to do this count your blessings count your grateful to whomever you are and your gratitude to others so once you start counting them and say today morning i got up my mom brought me the coffee i was thankful i got up without any health problem in the morning thankful to god i went to the office my boss appreciated me thank you to the boss when i was returning back to home there was no accident with me thank you to the god so count the gratitude that is very essential otherwise every time whenever you think you think that i am good for nothing nobody loves me nobody hates me that is what you are training your brain in autopilot mode now you have to change that for that having gratitude is very essential and as you somebody has said that having the attitude of gratitude is a important quality of a human being that makes you content that means you feel happy so you have to practice this and also one of the other important gratitude is having prayer this is i will having experiential exercise with you all of you now i request all of you to sit in one place either on the chair or sleep feel relaxed close your eyes think of a person whom you love most bring their image in your mind their smiling face and now you pray pray that they should be happy they should be healthy 
and free from suffering. Do this every day before you sleep. That is the gratitude you are going to pay for your parents, your family, your relatives, friends, society at large and also to the God. This is a very essential exercise. Please do this, connecting yourself and also connecting with the society by through gratitude and prayer. And also the very essential component which I would like to tell is you need to invest in connecting with family members, relatives, friends during festivals, holidays. That is what is going to make your life rich. As I mentioned earlier, what do you remember in 2015? The time spent with your family members, with your friends, with your relatives. That will enrich your life. So you need to invest time with your family. Moving to the third important. Purpose or meaning in life. What is your purpose? What is the purpose of your life? Is it money, self, only family? If you have a larger goal, larger goal of helping people, contributing society, you will feel accomplished. You will feel every day getting up and going to achieve that goal. That is very essential. So have your personal life dedicated to others, to the society. That will give meaning to your life. Moving to the last part, being aware of thoughts and feelings. That means most of us will evaluate ourselves negatively or else think negatively about ourselves or else others or else about the world. That means negativeness is there in our brain. How to overcome that? First and the most is being aware of it. So you need to monitor your thoughts, feelings, behaviors and sensation. So you need to bring a book. I will call it as a dairy. And you need to do this three times a day. That is morning, afternoon and evening. You need to, as soon as you get up, after you do your work in the morning, what is your feelings? Document that. What is your thoughts? What is your behavior? What is the sensation? Document that. Suppose you are feeling low. Why I am feeling low? What are the thoughts running in my mind? How is my behavior? What is the sensation in various parts of the body? If you start doing this over a period of next two to three months, you will be able to know your thoughts, your emotions, and also you will be able to know the trend of your thinking. How do I think? How do I feel? And what is my behavior? So you will be able to understand your own thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and sensation. Once you are aware, it is easy to deal. If you are not aware of your own thoughts, feelings and also sensation, you will deny it and you will never work towards it. Being aware is the first step and half of your work is done. Now, by knowing your thoughts, feelings, sensation, now you will be able to practice mindful breathing. Once you are aware, you will be able to accept them, you will be able to acknowledge them, being non-judgmental and also being kind for your experiences, what you have. That is what is mindfulness. Now, once you start this mindful exercises, which I have told now, that is breathing, mindfulness breathing, mindfulness eating, and various other things, you will start monitoring your thoughts, monitoring your feelings, behaviors, and sensation. Every day, whenever you do in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the night. Once you start doing this mindfulness, you will see your dairy thoughts, feeling, behavior starts changing over a period of time. That is the beauty of mindfulness. Before you start doing your mindfulness exercise, one or two months, please do this. And once you start doing this mindfulness exercise, again start charting this. This will give you a clear cut record that your thoughts and emotions and sensations starts improving and your quality of life becomes the top notch. Now moving to the mindfulness practice. Sir, how to do this? You have given the theory. What is the best way to do? So the best way to learn is mindfulness training. Usually across the world, the mindfulness training is done for a period of 8 weeks. That is 8 weeks of training. Each training session lasts for 2 hours, sometimes 3 hours. 
invariably majority of them suggest for two hours per day. 60k week is the training session which will last over a period of 100 to 120 hours of training over a period of eight week session. Once you undergone training, the success is in practice. The more you practice, you will master the skills. That means just because you undergone training doesn't mean you are becoming mindful practitioner or else mindfulness. No, you have to practice. You have to practice daily. Then only you will get the benefit of mindfulness. So what are the different ways of doing it? There are two ways of doing it. One is formal, another one is informal. Formal mindfulness practice means you are dedicating some time, maybe 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening or else one hour in the morning that is dedicated, fixed time for every day. And it is, you are making time for it. That is formal. Informal is there is no dedicated time. And you make this mindful practice in smaller chunks, maybe three minutes, five minutes, and you are going to make it part of your daily life activities. Suppose if you are sitting in the toilet, you can do three minutes of breathing exercise or else if you are washing vessels, then also you can do. If you are driving a vehicle or else you are traveling, you can do. If you are in a plane, you can do this three minutes. So that means you are doing the mindfulness exercise as a part of life. Depending upon either formal or informal, whichever suits you, please choose that. But you have to practice and you have to make it a part of your daily living. Sir, should I do alone or else should I take help of the practitioner or the therapist? Both are best. One is therapist assisted for eight weeks or more and then doing at home or else self-therapy by reading books or watching videos like this. But the issue here is motivation, doing your homework and getting committed to do mindfulness is the success. Just because you are going to your best practitioner or a therapist, you will not be successful. The successfulness is in practicing daily, having intention to do mindfulness and also to improve your quality of life. So the success relies on one need to practice this mindfulness daily. We need to practice being mindful in your daily lives because that's where we need it most. In daily life, mindfulness is essential. Hence, you have to do daily. So mindful cultivation is a very essential component. So mindfulness is to be cultivated on most daily basis. It is cultivated by gently learning how to pay attention on purpose in the present moment, being kind and non-judgmental to the things they are not to react, responding, being gentle and kind, focusing on experiencing in the present moment, that is mindful awareness, that you need to cultivate, that is done by practicing. Now let's understand about various mindful exercises you can do. One is as I told mindfulness breathing. Next one is mindfulness body scanning. I'll be doing a separate video on that. Mindfulness seeing, maybe observing a leaf, observing a flower, Mindful eating, that is mindful eating resin or any other food. Acceptance of thoughts and feeling exercises. Acceptance of social anxiety. Mountain meditation. Acceptance of social anxiety. Breath focus without guidance. Mindfulness of bell exercise. The self-compassion mindfulness. Observer meditation mindfulness. Five senses exercise. Mindful walking down the street technique. So these are the various techniques you should do to know and to feel and to be mindful. But another very essential, which is very difficult to do, that is let going. How to do this let go? Let's see this picture. Here is a monk sitting on the rock next to the river bank. And on either side of the river bank, you can see the trees. And leaves from the trees are falling into the river. And they are getting slowly floating away from the monk. Here it how it goes. Now the monk will write all his worries on these leaves and he will let go. He has a worries about day-to-day -day life. He is worried about his children. He is worried about the world. 
so he will write those on the leaves and he will let go. He also has the thinking that I am useless. He will write that on the leaf and he will let go. That means he is acknowledging it, he is accepting it, he is non-judgmental and he is writing on the leaves and let going it. He feels everyone hates him. That is the thought. That is the feeling. He is getting frustrated. He is writing on the leaves and allowing to wash away. That is let going. So if you learn this technique, you will be the most happiest person on the earth. To summarize about mindfulness, dear friends, paying attention to the present moment, getting connected to the self, to the society, family members and everyone, purpose of life, for the larger context, being aware of your thoughts and feelings and to get connected, say good morning, having a good day, loving yourself, breathing technique, mindful breathing, good morning, praying for self and loved ones, good night and counting for blessings, what you practice becomes stronger. You should repeat this in mind. The more you engage in mindfulness, it will become stronger and you will be happy. Being in the present moment is the essence of mindfulness. Focusing intentionally on the present moment. Accept the experiences. Being impartial spectator and let go in the experience is the very important component. So, you can achieve this mindfulness by mindfulness breathing, mindfulness working, mindfulness listening, mindfulness eating, mindfulness walking, and various other mindfulness activities can be learned. So, my dear friends, you can learn the Buddhist way of mindfulness. It requires practice. The only way to succeed is making this mindfulness a part of your life. Then you will succeed and you will feel happy. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.